It's just a Saturday afternoon, downtown Winnebago, Minnesota. We're here with Dr. Hams, and we've got a Cinerama gutted from the backside. I believe they call these chalet-style frame, as I've been told by Bob Peary, but numerous ham signs use them. The Cinerama is known by its telltale white sides, and Steve, I'll let you take off from there. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so the, uh, the, the, the this frame, particular frame, got used on a, quite a few... Uh, signs, uh, obviously, be, other than the Cinerama, it also got used on a lot of their, what I call, static-lated signs. And, and one way you can tell the Cineramas, the Cinerama and, and this one, and the, the ice-cold beer one are the only two that actually have the white uh, panels on them. You can see over here, these two here. All right, we're backing off here. These Hold. two... This is what it looks like without the white panels. The stucco, I call it stucco, is still there. It's just that it doesn't paint it white. And, and so what I do is if, if I have a bad frame set, for instance, on a Cinerama, I will sometimes take one of these frames and use for a Cinerama and basically just mask this off. And you can just spray paint it white and it looks, looks fine. I even do it, in fact, I did it with this one. As they get kind of chipped and yellowed and, and whatever. And if they don't clean up nice, just, you know, I, and I just use a, a gloss white, and it really sharpens the sign up. I've often found, too, a magic eraser works great. And then on a side note, while we got the roof panels out, a lot of times just spraying armor all on them. Mm -hmm. and it Actually, know, actually, what I use, I use it for them as, as this. Uh, it's called, uh, it's a wizard. It's, it's similar to, um, it's similar to uh, the uh, armor all, but it doesn't, it doesn't have the, real gloss it's got kind of the dull gloss and I, and I I find that you know you can see these that's what I've treated these with after and what I do with them is I'll take an, and I got a pressure washer and I'll spray them down and take a pressure washer and, and it blows out all the dirt and, and everything and then I give them a coat of that vinyl shine and and as you can see they really look nice after that's done that is amazing, and we might as well go into roof panel matching at this point. Yes, yes, that's a the critical part. Uh, a lot of times, uh, the panels, unless they come off the same sign, will not match color-wise. Uh, what happens is, is that they've been in different locations, uh, different uh, you know uh, lots that they were even made in. That, that sometimes if, if you just go to replace one panel, it doesn't match very well. And you can see even these, these aren't exact match. As you can see, this one is a little darker. But uh, that's, that's a big problem with trying to... And the only other real solution to that is obviously to, to paint them. And I did find some paint that is very, very close to this color, and it doesn't look too bad. Uh, if they're really scuffed up or whatever, sometimes I'll resort to that. Or if, if you get a broken panel, I have a, a mold that I fix those with. And this is what those look like after I fix them. This had the, the edge busted off. And then, of course, so obviously you, you have to paint this. But once you paint them, they look really good. The back side, of course, where, where you fill it in, of course, you don't see that anyway. But this is what, this is what a repaired panel will look like. Very good. And this is what we're fixing is called a small scenorama, which has the rotating scene. There is not a small static scene of the scenorama. However, the large scenorama has a static scene, which many collectors have been fooled by. And Stephen has always told me in his many years of wisdom that you will never see that scene, or rarely, uh, frozen at that point featuring the waterfall and canoe and such. And also by the weight of the signs, you can tell. Oh, immediately. You, you pick the sign up. I've always said if somebody advertises one and it just so happens it's centered right on that campfire scene, you can pretty much assure yourself that that's a static one because the chances of that getting that sign getting shut off right there is, you know, pretty slim. Not that it can't happen, but, but uh, yeah, that, that's that's the one way, especially if you see one in an advertisement or or something like that for sale, and and the, and the seller does not know if it's a motion sign or not. If that if that is front and center, you pretty much can tell that is it's a, a non non motion sign and it's almost getting to the point too where the prices i mean we're old dogs in this but you remember when the scenorama was stretching it at three hundred dollars and a non mover you know a hundred dollars right. but very often non-moving signs are always worth it for the chalet type frame as 
Very often these feet get busted up or various case problems on these, but you're almost better. They don't sell replacement ones because that would be a pain in the ass to ship okay. without damage, but uh, it's always worth buying non-movers for just parts, roof panels and the chalet frame and such. Steve, what about the insides here? Lots of people wonder about the plexiglass, and that's an easy way to refurbish your scenorama because mm -hmm. often those yep. are scratched, fogged, you name it. But when you pull them out, <clears throat> these I think you've told me before are not necessary. In well, this 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 part this is this is the, your these are your light shields here. What you're thinking about, Barry, are the are the uh, um, in fact they're in the trash here probably. <laughs> these these metal bars. And normally what, what they use is they, they'd have these metal bars and that basically holds in the plexiglass. Well, you can see there's quite a few sharp edges and everything on these. And what happens, this one in fact had one right here that I've repaired. These little nubs where the screws go into will break off. And what happens then is this that'll allow this to come forward and boom, you scratch the seam. So what I do with these is I eliminate these metal bars, just like that. And I will cut my plexiglass larger so that it fits, actually fits over this deal. And then I do not use, let's see if I got one here. I think we've got a thin one in the, you know, if you want to just demonstrate. Oh yeah, with... there you go. Okay. So actually this, this is an old one and you can see how nasty that looks. And if you take and lay this in here, you can see it fits right over those those deals. So what I do then is I'll cut the plexiglass large enough so that I can use, I never put the side screws in because if those two break, boom, you got a scratch right across the scene. And that's if, when, if you see one on eBay, well, there's one there too, a glass. And so what I do is I just cut the glass large enough and then I just use the screws, these six screws to hold that plexiglass in. So if any of these break, it's not a big deal because the scene rides above that and below that. These two here aren't really necessary. Six screws will easily hold this in. So that's what I do. And what I use, what I use to, uh, and, and I was gonna say, Steve, not to interject, but uh, people out in beer land across the USA or the world can also go to Home Depot or the local hardware store, get the Plexi cut. Oh my gosh, look at this, as I read your on mind. cue. Yep. This is this is what you, what I use for for the new glass. And now the one thing you got to be careful of, you want it eighty thousandths thickness. Anything thicker, it's going to rub. So you want the thin stuff. Now obviously this has got a plastic sheet on there, but but this is what I use. It's fairly inexpensive. You can buy it at Home Depot, Menards, any of the Lowe's, any of the big box stores. And would you drill this to put screws in, yes. or do you? Mm -hmm. si yep. How about uh, silicone? Have you ever used no, that? As no. Okay. No. That has a tendency to kind of bleed up and, and you can see it. And then, of course, if you ever did have to replace it, it really makes a mess. And using, using the screws just works perfectly. One of the easiest ways to just make your Scenorama look new is to put a new plexiglass. Oh, gosh, it makes a huge difference. And then we're going to cover while we've got this thing opened, and you're still with us here. That's good. You share a passion for restoring old beer signs, preserving history. The marble background, which a lot of times can be pretty brittle over the years, smoke stain, any number of problems, but you see these little tabs that Lakeside Plastic put in as a part of their installation process. Well, it was very efficient back in the day to simply put the panel over these nubs, then a guy would take, and can you imagine the smell, but heck, they were smoking at their desk back in the day, of a soldering iron taking and putting it through these holes and then melting it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually what they did is they used, they had the three pieces, they used the black lattice, plate, or yep, black lattice work, whatever, and your logo plates, and you see how that's dimensional. I think I've seen a deceptive seller print that into an insert yes. one time. Yes, well in fact some of the static signs, such as this one, it has it, this, now this particular, this particular piece goes into the one with the, the man and the bear. Yep. Uh, um, canoe scene. The and static it, scene, the not static the scenorama. Scene. Right, yep. right. And it has kind of the same look, but it doesn't have, obviously, the three-dimensional. You'll see that quite often, too. And when once obviously, once you see that, you know it's been changed. Because every scenorama had this. You no own. exception. No exception. And Steve, I don't mean to name names or anything, but 
are have there been purveyors sellers of inserts say oh gosh for, yeah and are they in your opinion substandard to what you have? I, I have seen quite a few substandard ones yeah i i like say there's there's a seller on ebay right now that that is selling he's selling actually quite a few things he's selling the new scenes for the tv rippler they said there's he's selling uh this blue background with with different wording on it, different fonts whatever uh there's actually even one he's got that's got the bear on it whatever and if that's what you want fine I, but it's not original so uh, and how about the say let's color cover the translucency and uh say a 56 tv box rippler have you had uh, aficionados of brewery and signs return or complain about them because of yes, their a lot of them especially the, especially the tv rippler scene the one that's being sold now here's one of mine and the one that you see on ebay right now like say and i don't like to to criticize anybody's stuff but the one that is on ebay now the 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 actual you look at it first of all it isn't it isn't translucent enough to let light through so I've had a lot of people contact me and they'll say, I put a new scene in, but I'd have no motion. Let's hold this up to the light oh, yeah, just there so you go. people know what we're talking about. Yeah. This is the uh, scene for the 56 TV box Rippler, which is so-called. It's got a gray cabinet to it, but it resembles a TV, TV mm -hmm. of yore. Mm -hmm. so. the, and the one that's being, the other, the other one that's being sold, if you look at it, the photography is very blurry. It's not very crisp. Um, and, and the big thing is, is it doesn't let enough light through so that you don't see any rippling. Mm -hmm. And I get, oh, maybe two or three calls a week on that particular problem. And I say, okay, you got bought one on eBay, right? Yeah. And I said, well, that's the problem. It, it will not work. This is, like I say, this is mine, and they work pretty darn good. And if you're going to go to the trouble of getting one of these restored, like I say, if you have a jar in your living room or man cave and you threw a buck in there, or five bucks every time somebody comments on it, the nostalgia factor. If you're gonna do something, you can cut corners, you can uh, save a buck, but this is something that, uh, why not spend the money on it and do it right? It's uh, the cost well, the signs is- are worth it. I mean, yes. I, I mean, it's, it's just like, I'll get calls from, I, I sell new motors for this particular sign, the Cinerama, and uh, I have to buy 100 at a time, and I have motors now for seven different signs, motion signs, and so I have a fairly good investment in this, but um, I'll have people call me and want a motor for a Cinerama, and I, and I say, with well, $75, and they, oh my God, for that little motor? And I said, well, if you're not willing to spend $75 to fix a $1,200 sign, you know, I mean, they, they, there's other ones out there. there there's other ones being sold, and, and the problem is, is they're old. They're new old stock. They're probably made in the 50s and 60s. Mine are brand new, American-made, made in the last month. And uh, the ones, the ones, other ones are being sold are only one RPM, which is they they'll work, but your motion isn't the same. The correct one is 1.45 RPM. And uh, my motors are made by the same company that originally made them back, and originally made them back in the day, uh, Auto Troll out of out of uh, Wisconsin or out of Illinois. Fantastic. That's and uh, replacing motors on different signs. The Cinerama is. Fairly easy. A guy can do that yeah, at that's home. Yeah, that's a simple one. I got one right over here. In fact, it belongs to belongs the sign here. It's pretty pretty straightforward. We're going to follow over here to the... Here we go. Here's a small Cinerama. It's actually the inside, so that one I'm working on here. And here's the motor. Very simple. There's just two screws here and here. Two wires. And it doesn't make any difference which which way they go. You can have either way, the motor will still work. It's, it's 1.45 RPM counterclockwise. And then there's a small little pin on the end of this motor that engages in the slot in the end of that roller. So yeah, this is pretty simple. It's right out in the open. And Steve, while we're looking at this part, why don't we discuss a possible bearing malfunction or that might be an easy fix, right? Yeah, well, a lot of times if you do have a motor failure, what I tell people is I says, make sure that these bearings here are well lubricated and and will roll easily they're they're fairly fairly simple to do I, what i use is just a, a simple 301 oil and and work them in there and these do come off uh, so that you can do that uh, i also sell new ones but very seldom do not being able to free them up uh, there there's obviously four of them and if those if those bearings get sticky the motor will still turn them 
but it really will reduce the life of the motor. And uh, I say originally these were designed to run 24 hours a day, seven days a week, which they did. So the so that that's obviously people say, well, does it hurt to? Leave? I no, actually, uh, home life for one of these signs is a pampered life compared to what they're used to be in. Right, yeah, these were meant to run in a bar environment. I mean, being turned off at closing time, but started up at sometimes, whatever time. Yeah, sometimes in the... they were used as nightlights, and they just run all the time. Wow, fantastic. Well, we hopefully have given you some information here from Dr. Hams and Scenic Winnebago. Talk about the different length roofs. The Let's we, go back. We, we missed that, we missed that. <laughs> <laughs> that was what we were going to start with anyway. Right? right. Okay, now, on, on all your, the, only, the only sign that is different that I've found so far is the one that's the ice cold one, it's got the tin foil, and those, for some reason, have two short, there's two lengths of roof panels, long and short. Oh, the long and short of it. Yep. Now, the only one I have ever seen that came factory with two short roof panels, and I don't know why, is that one that says ice cold beer. It, like, has a reverse inset of tin foil, dimensional look. Right. Let me show you. I got to stay there. <laughs> I think I got one here. I can show you. Uh, maybe. Uh, and here we look at the removed bearings. Oh, yeah, there's some bearings. Uh, there's what the inside of a lot of ham signs will look like. They've been in a greasy, smoky bar environment. Uh, you know, heck, above the. Sometimes it looks like they've hung above the grill. Here's the new inserts. You'll ask about the on tap versus born in the land of sky blue waters. Any uh, thoughts on rarity, Steve, while you look up that? Uh, I can't find one now. But anyway, that's the only one that I've ever seen that has come factory with two short roof panels. And what happens if you have two short roof panels, the only the only downside is is the, the panels, as you can see, wouldn't have the overhang. Yep. As opposed to if you have a long and a short one, you'll have an overhang. Like our bellies over our belts. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Otherwise, every scenorama, every s s small static sign has a long and a short. Now, the the large scenorama has four roof panels. That has three short ones and one long one. Wow, so our Morse code of roof panels. Yep, and that also has, obviously, has the overhang. There's a, there's a large one here. And you can see... Yep, here we go. And usually has a clock or a food scene, probably. Yeah, this is a West Coast one. And West Coast versus uh, normal Midwestern, what would be the... the... The Midwestern one has the clock in it. Okay. And the reason they did that is there were certain states out West that didn't allow the clocks in bars. They didn't want you to know what time it was. Hey, I got time for another beer, right? Just like in casinos. Yes, same thing. Very good. Well, I think we've pretty much summed that up and uh, 18 minutes worth of expertise from Dr. Hams, Winnebago, Minnesota. If you have any questions, you can reach him at ibuyoldbeer.com. I don't know if I should give his actual email address, you but can, I don't care. Miner, M I N E R, like Miner 49er, at Bevcom, B E V C O double M, two M's, Bevcom.net. I'm Barry. This is Steve. Over and out.